Hey y'all, this is Anne from Downey Believer. I'm coming to you from inside my office, my little closet office, because there's construction going on outside my apartment and it's really loud and this is the quietest place I could find. There is a crane outside my apartment right now, a very tall crane, and if you've been following the news out of New York City this week, you might understand why that's a little bit disconcerting, but I'm sure it'll be fine. But that's not why I made this video, not to tell you about a crane. I wanted to share with you something that happened this week and what I've been thinking about in its aftermath. So, uh, for those of you who don't know, Sinead O'Connor, the singer, passed away this week. And so I made a TikTok about it. I sometimes make TikToks, usually faith-based, but from time to time I do something about people or events that happen that are kind of my generation, because I do have a lot of younger followers on TikTok to just say, hey, you might not know that this happened, but this was a thing and it happened and I wanted you to know about it. And so I did that with uh, the death of Sinead O'Connor because I thought there might be a whole generation of young people who don't know who she was. So here's my TikTok. So young people, this is Sinead O'Connor. And many moons ago, back before the world acknowledged or recognized the widespread abuse of children that was happening in the Catholic Church, Sinead O'Connor dared to stand up on the stage of Saturday Night Live and before anyone could stop her, tear up a picture of the Pope. Again, she ripped a photograph in two. And for that, she was absolutely vilified. You would have thought she was the devil incarnate. In fact, I believe some people called her such and her career was completely destroyed. Again, because she tore up a photograph in protest. She died today. And I hope she will be remembered not only for her beautiful voice, but for her boldness and badassery to stand up and protest the powers that be. So y'all, I've been on TikTok for about two and a half years. I've never had a video take off like this. Um, as of now, over a million people have viewed it and thousands and thousands and thousands have commented. If you have TikTok, you might wanna watch the video there and you can read the comments, which are almost all uh, positive. Um, almost, I would say 98% positive and I was I was overwhelmed by the number of people who came on and talked about how much they loved her and supported her and what an influence she had been on their lives and I, I was kind of stunned by this outpouring of devotion and admiration and my first thought was gosh I hope she knew that I do hope she knew um, what an impact she had had on so many lives and then I thought oh my gosh how could we have done this to her for those of you who don't know, and I'll give you a little more info, she went on Saturday Night Live. She had a big hit song called Nothing Compares to You. It was written by Prince. If you listen to the song, you can kind of tell that it's written by Prince. That is, if you are a Prince fan. And she sang the song, and she ripped up a picture of the Pope before anyone could stop her because it was Saturday Night Live and it was live. And for that, she was so completely vilified. Banned from Saturday Night Live. She was blacklisted all over the country. Um, her career in America was pretty much over. She, I believe, is Irish. Um, the name she was called, and again, she ripped up a picture. She didn't threaten anyone. She didn't cause anyone harm. And she was among some of, one of the first people to really call out what was going on in the Catholic Church in terms of systemic child abuse. This was at a time when some of the cases had broken, but People were still of the mindset of these are just a few bad apples that got through. Nobody realized the extent of the abuse. No one at this point was acknowledging that there was a systemic, a systemic problem that needed to be addressed and how the Catholic Church was complicit in this. She was one of the first people to act out and speak out and protest this. And the way she did it initially was to rip a picture of the Pope in half. And the way she was treated, y'all, it, it baffles the mind. You know, it was the Pope and she was disrespectful. Um, it probably also didn't help that she had rejected traditional ideas of beauty and she shaved her head and she dressed in very loose fitting clothing and did everything she could to not conform to the world's standard of beauty. And nobody likes a woman who does that. So not only was she working at not being beautiful, which she failed at because she was quite lovely, uh, she was also disrespectful. 
So I've been thinking about how our reaction would be now. I think it's been about 30 years ago that this happened. And I just can't imagine, I hope we wouldn't react. We being society as a whole wouldn't react that way now. And I've been thinking about something that I tell people a lot and I shared it with the youth um, at this conference I was recently at, that when people are having a really bad season in their life and they don't see how things are gonna get better, I have the five year rule. And you look back five years and you can see, I asked them to think about where God was working in their lives. And if they can see, how was God working in your life five years ago? And most of the time people can identify, oh wait, that was God. And I didn't know that then, but now I can see. And here's where God was working in my life and here's where God was working. And then I remind them that today will one day be five years ago. And that God is always working in our lives and that God is always in what we are doing, that God is always in it even when we can't see it. So that's my five-year rule to remind people, God is always in this with us, even when we can't feel it, even when we just don't see it happening. So I kind of want to come up with a different five-year rule. One, instead of looking back, it looks forward. Because now, now we know the rest of the story. And, and we know that that Sinead O'Connor was a bit of a prophet. She was really one of the first people to say, hey, there's something evil going on here that's not right. Um, and she was right, there was. We now can see how justified her anger was because we know what really was going on. We know what was happening within the church and why she might be angry enough to do such a dramatic yet peaceful act on national television makes a lot more sense now. So I wonder if we could initiate the Sinead O'Connor rule. And so now, whenever someone does something that seems outrageous or it is offensive, or we just don't even understand why they would need to say that or do that, um, can we do the Sinead O'Connor rule? And instead of looking five years ago, can we look five years forward and think about how what this person is saying, how that might play out in the next five years? and maybe even stop and consider where God might be in this person's actions and words. I wonder how that would change the way we would react to people's protests and their possibly outrageous acts. And it could just be, we could think about all those things and decide that this person is an idiot who is obnoxious and offends us, and those people exist. But I wonder how many times if we took the Sinead O'Connor rule and we look to the future and we thought about what if this person has a point? What if what they are saying is wrong really is wrong? What if what they're saying is true? What if the way we have been acting is not okay and we need to act differently? And what if God is in all of that too? So I'll encourage you all to practice not only the five-year rule, but to start adopting the Sinead O'Connor rule. And to those people who speak out and lash out and do outrageous things to get our attention, let's think about where we might be five years from now and if their words and actions as outrageous as they might be, have something to say.